Sam, one of the deep inspirations uh, in your work that you've expressed over the years is uh, Gandhiji, and both from your education as a child and, and how it's really influenced your whole adult life. I wonder if you could just share with us uh, some personal insights from Gandhi, and uh, because he's still very applicable today. Absolutely. I believe Gandhi is more important to the world today than ever before. Mm. I was fortunate enough to have been born in 1942. Gandhiji was still alive. Being a Gujarati family, living in Orissa, almost a thousand miles away from Gujarat, in our house, Gandhiji and Sardar Patel, two Gujarati heroes in the independence movement beside Pandit Nehru, were very important characters. So my parents used to talk about all three. And growing up in that Gujarati family, Gandhian values became very important to us. So when Gandhiji died, I still remember as a little boy, my father came home and we were sitting outside with my brother and I, and he said, Bapuji died. So immediately, all of us in the house had to take a bath. It's a custom in Gujarati family. When somebody in the family dies, you take a bath. So it was like someone in our family had died. So when Sardar Patel died, my parents decided to send us to a boarding school with my older brother and my brother and I in Gujarat. So we went to this boarding school. I was in the fifth grade, about nine year old. And the entire ecosystem there was based on Gandhian values, which emphasize simplicity, Nonviolence, vegetarian, food. I had never eaten meat before that in my life. Truth and absolute truth, and we'll talk about some of these things later on. Sense of sacrifice, love for all, unconditional love, concern for minorities, concern for poor. All of these things were sort of talked in the school and taught in a different way. All our teachers were very Gandhian, very simple, wore simple clothes, white, you know, uh, topi, shirt, dhoti. And we were brought up in that environment. These things had great impact on our mind. We valued ethics much more so than many people did. And I think this stayed with us throughout our life. I have learned a great deal from his life because his life was his message. He was the greatest communicator ever lived, according to me. How could you lift a pinch of salt and galvanize everybody? Was the guy that? In day and age when there was very little radio, no television, he could communicate to millions and millions. What would he do with social media and internet? And his messages are very simple. His life centered around his messages. Take for example truth. Truth is such a simple concept. If we follow that concept, you don't need any of the contracts. If I tell you that I'll give you $100 that you have given me back next week, you don't need to go to a lawyer and sign an agreement. Because then you have trust and you believe that what I'm saying is what I mean. And what I mean is what I say. 
Today's world is based on mistrust and not enough truth. Gandhiji believed in trust and truth. Everything you look around in the business world is completely based on mistrust and lies. Immediately 10 lawyers will come and 50 page document would be drafted and three fellows will sign it and seven fellows will attest it and will be deposited in this account and that account and because nobody takes anybody for truth. So Gandhian way of looking at all of these things are very different. Take non-violence. His thing was Satyagraha. You can demonstrate. I don't know whether you have seen Gandhi movie. But fascinating. You know? Such a simple idea of non-violence. How he used that tool to really get attention from British in a very different way. It was the greatest innovation. He doesn't get credit for it, but he was an innovator of the first order. He knew exactly what was going on. He had his own way of dealing with it. His whole emphasis on simplicity, his clothing, his living, you know, was very simple. His requirements were a minimum. He didn't have any asset. He didn't have a bank account. They didn't have anything. And he lived comfortably. Okay, whatever comfort means. He was a man of great wealth. Absolutely. Now, world has forgotten all this. You know, the world needs today Gandhian thinking and also a sense of sacrifice. He always sacrificed for others. You, know, you may not go to his extreme, but we are not willing to sacrifice anything today for others. Invariably, I find those who are capable of giving want to take more from the system. And those who want to give don't have much to give. You need people who have enough to give and they are giving. And Gandhiji was very clear about all of these things. You know, love for everybody. Whether it was Hindu, Muslim, young, old, men, women, no issues. Foreigners, national, it didn't make any difference. They were all human beings. He treated everybody well. And interestingly enough, he had same standards in public versus private. See, when I saw this uh, uh, Wikipedia leak a couple of years ago, big news all over on television and I was watching one day and I said what a strange way to look at this in light of this young guy who posted all this in Wikipedia and the power all over the world said get that guy because he's exposing the facts Mainly because what was said in public was different from what the facts were. If both were same, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. So conflicts begin in political public life when what you say in public is very different from how you practice your personal life. To Gandhi, the same standard in public and private. If he said something, that's exactly what he did in private. Very few people can deal with it. His idea of development was based on distributed development, local considerations, village level thinking, uh, doing your own thing, you know, growing your own food. You know. Self sufficiency. Self sufficiency. Okay. His concern for environment were very clear. Grow your local species of tree and don't bring foreign species because it won't fit the environment. You know? 
and at the same time he was global. In those days he wrote a lot. He had his own newspaper and he spread his message across. And he was a global man because he had all kinds of foreign interactions and visitors and friends and he wrote to everybody. You know, he was in communication with Einstein and, you know, uh, phenomenal reach in those days. Unfortunately, he was not flashy. You know. So in the modern world, he's not cool. So people have forgotten Gandhi. Even in India, people have forgotten Gandhi. People put Gandhi's picture on the wall and look up every once in a while, but don't practice. If you practice Gandhi, the world would be very different. And it's very easy to practice Gandhi, but you need inner strength. Gandhi had very strong self. See, today I find that a lot of people have very fragile self-esteem. They get hurt very easily. If you have fragile self-esteem, you cannot be a team player. See, in order for me to respect you, I must respect myself. In order for me to see good in you, I got to see good in me. Very few people can deal with that. Now they never compared. But he always saw good in me, whatever that was. Now these are all simple concepts that all of us know it's very hard to practice. And he practiced every one of these things. And that was his contribution. He was a living example of what he said he would do. Unfortunately, global community also didn't recognize him. You know, many people say he never got a Nobel Prize, but I think he was beyond Nobel Prize. You know. Uh, he he was a philosopher. You know, he was an innovator. He was a leader. You know, and he was a common man. I mean, can you think of a man who never wore any military uniform, had no position in the government, had no title, no designation, but he fought British Raj single handedly and got them out? And everyone was concerned about him, afraid of him. And he was not a big guy, so you could he could impress you. He's just a little fellow. But that is the power of the mind, the power of the soul. You know. And a lot of his stuff came out of his own learning in his life. You know, there is a song, Vaishnava Janto Tenere Kriya, which is the song that comes in the movie also. And I think that song says it all. If you really analyze that song, it says everything about Gandhian way of living life. Today, world needs Gandhi badly. People need simple life, honest people, ethical people, people who are concerned about others, people who are not self-centered, people who don't believe in violence, you know, all of these things are so very important. You know. But unfortunately, nobody talks about it. You know. well, I certainly uh, hope for the sake of the world that there is a revitalization and appreciation of Gandhiji. We are trying to create a portal. I have been working with a lot of my colleagues in the government and Gandhi Ashram Ahmedabad on four projects. One, we are creating Gandhi portal. The idea is to take all Gandhiji literature and thoughts and pictures and all that and put it in one place for the young population in the world and then translate in multiple languages, mm -hmm. German, Chinese, English, it's in English and Hindi. To translate in, you know, Portuguese, Spanish, whatever. Two, Gandhiji visited 2,000 sites in India. 
and we want to take about a couple of hundred of those sites and build those sites that he visited for the young to go visit and sensitize them. Three, we have a Gandhi University in Gujarat, which is called Gujarat Vidyapit, and it's only in Gujarati. So I met with them and I said, look, I want to take this Gandhi University idea and take it global on internet. So if somebody sitting here wants to take a course on Gandhi and nonviolence, he can take it online. <laughs> and then Gandhi University should be not just in Gujarat, it should be in every state in India. Give an option to local chief ministers. If they want to do it, we'll support them. And fourth, I would like to start once a year conference on Gandhi's intellectual heritage. <laughs> Nobody is paying attention to Gandhi's intellectual heritage. There are so many great scholars all over the world working on Gandhi in different ways. Psychoanalysis of Gandhi, philosophy of Gandhi, whatever. We don't have one platform to bring all of these together once a year. So I want to do that. So these are four projects I'm working on. I think Prime Minister would be uh, Launching the portal on September 2nd, I'm going to be there hopefully. And we have had great support from Prime Minister and the government. And I think it's whatever we can do, little to revive Gandhi needs to be done right.